Hi, hello, this is a speed paint video. A bit different from my usual speed paints where I put music on them and speed them up, but I figured since this is a redesign of canon characters, I might as well add some commentary. So, Shaolin Showdown! A show where four kids train to be dragon warriors of nature elements and trying to find magical mystical objects called Shen Gong Wu to keep the world from falling to 10,000 years of evil darkness. And anyone over the age of 18 can probably remember the episodes, the most uncomfortable one being the one with, uh, Good Jack. I hated those episodes so much because it caused me so much secondhand embarrassment as a 7 year old. <clears throat> Speaking of, you can probably tell that I made Jack Spicer, evil boy genius extraordinaire, into a monk, and that's because I felt like we were fucking robbed of him being a dragon warrior of metal. Don't get me wrong, I love Ping Pong from Chronicles, I think he's a sweet pea, but I dislike Chronicles and what they did to Jack so much, as well as the new names for the Shen Gong Wu that I could only watch one of the episodes from the series before noping out. With Jack's design, I couldn't take away the few things about him that made him Jack Spicer, that being his infamous goggles and infamous eyeliner. With his goggles, I was gonna turn them into those full lenses goggles that uh, sometimes divers use because I wanted to make him seem more like a welder, but I looked up welder goggles and uh, and I decided against it because apparently he's already wearing welder goggles. With his outfit, I made it so he had more arm movement because in the series, he's, he's sort of emotional and that seeps into his body language. I made his sash a bit wider than the others, mostly because of the fact that I like to think that aside from telling people what level you are, you can have the option of having an outfit that gives you a crutch. So with his sash, imagine him having pockets in it for small sheets of metal, since uh, since metal is an easily accessible element. That's also why I gave him a ring and an earring, so that if he ever needs to, and hopefully he never does, but if he ever needs to, he can use them as as a sort of small bullet type weapon. As far as pants and boots, I imagine him building a prototype of a hover disc under the soles of his boots, and the straps just add another form of security for him. His pants have weighed soon into the sides and bottoms, because I had canon that Jack is neurodivergent and is very fixated in robotics and puzzles, and the weighted clothing makes him feel, again, a bit more secure. I do want to preface before moving on, I felt like giving him welder gloves, but he cut off the fingertips just because he's an edgy teenage boy. Next up is my baby boy, my son boy Omi. He's right, he is up right next to the top favorite characters, just below Jack. The very first thing I changed about him is his skin color and his eyes. I think in the OG series, they wanted Omi to be yellow and round because of the Simpsons thing. You know, bright yellow, a great mascot for the show, makes great running jokes for other characters using his head as a joke. And I get it, I do, but I also wanted him to look more like a person. So to anyone wanting his yellow big brown head back, tough nuts. Side note, I think the reason they made the Omi parents episode was so it would seem that whatever Omi was is normal in-universe and not a stereotype of him being yellow and having a weird accent, you know, despite the fact that Master Fung raised him and he sounds normal, but IDK. I was going to give him those Buddhist robes with the blue collar of the sash as they were, but I realized Omi is a kid. He's like, what, seven in the universe? Maybe ten? So I gave him a kid tunic and lined the hem and the collar with blue silk. The reason why I didn't make his sleeves with blue silk is because I realized he's going to be dealing with a lot of water. And wet sleeves are already annoying. Wet silk sleeves are gonna be hell. And I couldn't do that to my son. I couldn't do that to my, my, my sweet, sweet baby boy who's always, who is always in spirit 
but he's just a little confused. But he got the spirit. Captain Baldwin gave him pockets for his orb of Turnami, and he is done. Kimiko Tohomiko was a peach to draw. Instead of pigtails, I gave her hair buns with the ends a bit loose to pay homage to her original hair. The reason being is that she's a teenager and, like, I think she's around 13 or 14 in the original series. And I can tell you guys, as someone who grew up with long-ass hair, there's a time when you stop wearing them in pigtails so people can take you seriously. And I feel like Kimiko would do that. As for her outfit, not a lot changed with her pants. They're still the same as the one she wears in the show. I like to think her pants don't morph into socks because that means she's wearing an entire legging in the entire show. So instead, imagine her sandals already coming with socks and she just straps them on for easy wearing. For her robes, I got... Uh, I got the idea from Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior, where it kind of has no sides to them, but the front and the back of it are long. Her sleeves I cut because she's dealing with fire a lot, and from experience, cloth and fire do not go well together. As for her armbands and bangles, I made from fire-resistant material so she doesn't burn her hands, but a small head cannon I have for Kimiko is that her fire doesn't cause second to third degree burns. While it can burn objects, it can't burn people to the point where they need hospitalization, if that makes sense. So first degree burns or any kind of burns akin to sunburn does a job in stunning her opponents, so the fire itself is relatively safe. Unless it's long-term exposure, then it's just, uh, uh, just, just get away. I like to think that her element is the most likely to be used as an attack element. Her key prevents it from going haywire since it's in the, uh, quote-unquote good side of the factions. Raimundo Casanova Pedrosa. I'm joking, he's like 16. Don't enable his flirting habits, please. I had a bit of trouble with his arms because I wanted him to look confident but friendly and I made his skin darker because he seems like the kind of kid who goes outside a lot and adding to the fact that he's Brazilian and I don't know about y'all but a lot of Brazilians don't burn in the sun, they brown. In this Seiyu, he's still the Shoku warrior of the five so his uniform has a different color scheme than the others. I was gonna give him willowing sleeves as an homage to his element, but I decided to cut his sleeves instead for easier movement and give him quarter fitting sleeves instead. As for his sash, they go around his shoulders before going back to his waist. It, uh, kind of like those things you use for bungee jumping, I think. For his pants, it's, I may have used a reference of, you know, you know those pants that breakdancers wore? Those jogger pants? I gave him that because if you watched the original series, his entrance is literally him breakdancing with his element, so funky pants were a must. His shoes. His fucking shoes were supposed to be sandals, but again, he seemed like the most active of all the monks, aside from Omi. So I gave him running shoes instead, and uh... And I kind of headcanon that he has a large collection of sneakers, which he takes care of, which he really, really takes really good care of. He just seems like a sneakerhead, you know? And finally, Clay Bailey. I'm going to preface that I adore him. He's a gentle giant amongst warriors, and I wanted to incorporate that. Because he works at a farm, I gave him freckles as a reference to a lot of white people who tend to work under the sun, and then decided to roll his sleeves up uh, just to make it look like a tank top because, you know, tank. Ha ha ha. I'm sorry. <laughs> his post gave me problems because I didn't want him taking most... <sighs> his post gave me problems because I didn't want him taking up most of the space and that I wanted to make sure he was in the same perspective as the other monks, I had to squish him a lot and had trouble figuring out 
how his arms were supposed to be. I wanted his body language to seem open and friendly while making him look strong enough to carry an ox. His sash is reminiscent of those ropes that people sometimes use as belts, and honestly, I think he genuinely would use it as a rope if he needed to. Instead of sandals like Kimiko and Omi, I gave him boots, more specifically cowboy boots. I hated drawing his hat, mostly because I can't draw hats well, not to mention wide-brimmed hats and with tops. I lightened up his hair, gave him some brown streaks since his hair is probably sun bleach enough. And, well, it, with his bandana, it was gonna be red, but I realized if that happened, not only would that it look like it morphs into his uniform, but then he'd be the only monk without any black in his scheme. So I changed it to black as a last ditch effort to keep him in the theme with the others. Like Kimiko, he has wristbands, but uh, it wor they work like wrist ports, you know, the ones that athletes use since he'll be handling a lot of heavy lifting. And there we go. All five of the main Shaolin Showdown kids, I really enjoyed working on this and on the script. So if y'all enjoyed this too and want me to make more, let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see more of my content, you can subscribe if you like. And that's all the things I want to say. See you soon. Bye!